those astronauts are still up there. Okay? Th those astronauts are still up there. Hold on. <clears throat> those astronauts are still up there. They're still up there, man. Those people are still up there. Those two astronauts are still up there with the Boeing Starliner because, as it turns out, $125 million in the hole, in deep, no pullout, one big sloppy mess. That's where Boeing's at. 56 days and counting. So let's start from the beginning. What is going on? What is going on? So this video came out, and this was from Hotspot, July 12th. So already, already, folks, this, this is not looking good for our heroic astronauts. And listen, in the off chance that these astronauts are followers of Hard Lens Media or their family members, do not get on that Starliner. There's a lot of things wrong with it. Two NASA astronauts are stuck on the ISS. Come in. Hold on. Sorry, I've, I just realized that there, there's some copyright music playing on that. So my my apologies on that. So let me just uh, pull that video down. So these astronauts, these two astronauts, uh, their high stakes mission was supposed to last about a week. But 56, 56 days later, two NASA astronauts are still on board the International Space Station, waiting as teams on the ground tried to figure out how to bring them home safely in the Boeing spaceship they rode to orbit. The beleaguered Starliner capsule has two problems. Its propulsion system is leaking helium. That's not good. And five of its thrusters malfunctioned as it was docking with the space station. Mission managers were aware of leaks before the vehicle lifted off, but said they were unlikely to affect the flight or the astronaut's safety. Mission managers, all of you should be fired. All of you should be fired. So wait a minute. You you knew that there were leaks, but you didn't think it would have. You didn't think. That's the key word. You didn't think. Over the weekend, NASA and Boeing engineers conducted a key test of the Starliner, which launched uh, veteran astronauts uh, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore on the vehicle's first crewed flight on June 5th. The hot fire test, as it is known, was the second such test of the Starliner's thrusters while it had been docked at the space station. Uh, it, involving firing 27 of the capsule's 28 uh, jets for bursts no longer than 1.2 seconds. Engineers on the ground evaluated the thrusters' performance one at a time and also checked the status of the helium leaks. In a blog uh, post published Tuesday, NASA uh, said preliminary results were encouraging. I don't believe that. With all the tested thrusters performing well. Good luck. All right, both teams were very happy with the results. And that's this 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 does not look good. This this does not look good. I'm I'm not I'm not satisfied with these answers. The agency also said it verified that the Starliner's propulsion system was stable and that the helium leaks had not increased in a way that might jeopardize a return trip to Earth. Okay, hold on. Xi Jinping, Putin, and yes, Elon Musk. Have your ships at the ready, because I I I just I just, I just don't think this is going to work. But then again, we, we we will see. The helium system will be checked again before the Starliner capsule undocks from the space station, according to NASA. Wilmore and Williams were seated inside the Starliner capsule during the hot fire test as part of the return preparations. Oh, good lord. The thrusters are crucial for maneuvering the spacecraft in orbit, such as when the capsule approaches the space station and when it backs away from the outpost during the undocking process. Oh, please, God, let them let them return safely. The capsule's rea uh, reaction control thrusters are also used to guide it into a uh, proper position before a different set of engines is fired to begin the journey out of orbit. Oh, no. The in-orbit Starliner test came weeks after work on the ground using test engine at uh, using a test engine at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. Teams subjected that engine and thrusters, which were developed for future Starliner flights, to conditions similar to those that the capsule experienced on its way to the space station. Engineers also replicated conditions that the Starliner will experience as it undocks and prepares to re-enter the atmosphere. In the coming days, NASA and Boeing officials will assess data from all the tests to date. Uh, to date and may conduct a formal review to discuss when to bring the capsule and its astronauts crew home. NASA has not set a target landing date for the mission, but has said there are opportunities throughout August. Okay, wait a minute. 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 I hope 
I really hope that NASA doesn't bring the the Starliner ship home sometime during the DNC convention because if that's if if that's what they're prepping for because again this this was me being paranoid okay there's no basis in this but i could speculate and i don't know why it hit my brain i don't know but we're, we're, we're gonna sit here and speculate kit kat and the audience because if they're trying to bring these astronauts home during the dnc convention i'm willing to bet that kamala or the democrats will capitalize on that and have them on the lives so if they so so if they come back I could see like maybe uh, on a big screen, like the astronauts saying, hi, we're back in Kamala and the Democrats uh, capitalizing off of that. I could see them doing that. I could see them doing that. That's 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 what I could see happening. OK, but. Knowing Boeing. And the lawsuits that are, that it is currently in, and I do want to pull this up here. Crash victims family asked judge to toss morally reprehensible Boeing deal. Listen to those astronauts. If you if 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 you if you value your safety, you will stop and you will maybe say, wait a minute, hold on. Do we want to get on this Boeing airplane or this Boeing Starliner? So lawyers for families, the hundreds of victims killed in a pair of Boeing 737 MAX 8 airplane crashes, filed motions this week urging U.S. Judge Reed O'Connor to reject the amorally reprehensible plea agreement and instead force the company to go to trial. The Texas-based judge is considering a proposed deal finalized by the U.S. Department of Justice last week in which Boeing, hey, well done, Department of Justice. I knew you guys would come through, right? And which Boeing would plead guilty to conspiracy to defraud the Federal Aviation Administration. They're going to get a slap on the wrist uh, about the safety of the aircraft involved in the Lion Air Flight 6110 crash in Indonesia in 2018 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crash uh, the next year. Under the deal, which comes after the DOJ determined that Boeing breached its obligations under a 2021 Deferment Prosecution Agreement, DPA, the federal prosecutors recommended criminal charges. The company would, would also pay $243.6 million fine, invest $450 million in compliance and safety, and be subject to oversight by an independent monitor for three years. First of all, that number should be higher. The 450 should be a billion. And in compliance with safety oversight, it should be for forever, not just three years. The sweetheart deal deceptively uh, presents a version of Boeing's crime that conceals the fact that Boeing lies to the FAA, FAA directly and proximately killed 346 people, said Paul Cassie, an attorney for families and University of Law professor, in a Wednesday statement. This plea deal is not in the public interest. It's deceptive. It's unfair. He added, we urge Judge O'Connor to use his recognized authority to reject this uh, inappropriate plea and set the matter for a public trial so that all facts surrounding the case will be aired in a fair and open forum before a jury. Wow. Again, the filing from uh, Castle's team argues that the court should reject the rotten deal because it destroys the court ability to craft a fair and just sentence and one that is perceived as fair and just by the public. The parties have swallowed the gun by hiding relevant facts about Boeing's culpability. It allows Boeing to escape accountability for directly and approximately causing 346 deaths. It suspiciously exonerates Boeing's then senior leadership. The $243 million fine is inadequate under the principles of the sentencing. The compliance monitor provision is inaccurate, is in, in, is inadequate. The provision requiring Boeing to make new investments in compliance, quality, and safety programs is unenforceable and inadequate. And the, the, the restitution provision is misleading and unfairly allows Boeing to tie up restitution through extensive litigation and appeals. So the purpose of this and what all of you need to remember is. <clears throat> astronauts. Double check and triple check your work. Double check and triple check your work. Because you know something? I don't trust Boeing. Boeing. 